hard to consider.
hard to conceal. are carried into the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling, 
There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Everlasting Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for bringing us here together. We thank you, my God, for the life of Francis, for no party in our home. Today we are here, Father, to go through the service and also to do the intended. We ask for God that let your presence and your spirit be with us in everything that we shall do. And at the end of the day, we shall give you all the glory and all the praise. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are going to take our first thing, which is Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Verse number 27, and I read. 
when Jesus came and found that he had already been in the tomb for four days, when, so when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that you will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come. Amen. Amen. Our second name will be Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Lord. And I can be asked to rise your feet as we take our second name. Blessed Assurance. Yeah. 
seated. Our second Bible reading is from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, the book of Corinthians, first chapter of Corinthians, first of Corinthians chapter number 15. And we are reading from verse number 50 to 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. It says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption has put on incorruption, and this, immort this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Our third hymn is going to be Take My Life and Let It Be. And here, I want us to sing this song for ourselves because it is evident that our brother has moved on. But we are the ones who have a will. We are the ones who have hands. We are the ones who have feet. And we are singing this song that God should take our hands, he should take our feet, he should take our will and use it for his own glory while to the next. So please... Let's take that in, and then after that, I'll ask one of the siblings to read for us in biography, and then we'll take the tribute in the order that it shows us in the biography. So please, um, I don't know whether it's coming to Monica, whoever is coming to you, please be ready to read the biography after this thing. Please write your fitness to this song.
1970 in Accra. Just before France began preparatory school, his uncle, Mr. A. Yako, of blessed memory, convinced his brother, S.Y., to let Francis come and live with him. Uh, he had a lot of sons and thought it was best for Francis to grow up amongst his boys, since he risked being too pampered among the girls that Mr. S.Y., his, his brother, S.Y., had. Francis was moved to live with his uncle and attend associate international school at the airport residential area where he resided. His uncle's wife, Mrs. Chakom, helped shape Francis' life and Francis was always grateful for his support. After completing his primary education, Francis attended the secondary school where he completed his secondary education. At the master school, he made a lot of friends, whom he remained friends with until his until his death. His place at the master was so found him, as in the chief of start, to be based on the other side of him, just to stay at my best and get reactions. Once he served in my little one year national <coughs> service at Congo, where his parents came from. While doing his national service, he got himself uh, immersed in politics. If I joined the patriotic and MDP youth in Congo, I was always present in their local meetings and ready to serve the party. After completing his national service, he worked with his uncle, Mr. Iyakon, who guided Francis to adulthood. He was an entrepreneur, helped Francis develop as a man. During his vacations, he would ensure Francis drove him on his rounds, and in doing so, he got very close to his uncle and also gained valuable experience in business. Francis was very affable in nature and made lots of friends wherever he went. He joined Radio Gold and quickly rose through the ranks to one of the senior executives in a relatively short time. He was very diligent in his work and was able to bring lots of adverts for the station. Some of his colleagues at Radio Gold at the time media and politics. This included a close association with Mr. Papa Bonnie. That tied Francis to really go for a long time. It's about to put Francis under his wing and ensure he learned everything in the industry so as to help him grow. So it was a tough decision when Francis decided to leave to the UK. It's about to put him his blessings uh, so he could join his wife in London. Francis moved to London with his daughter Jessica. At the time uh, he moved to London, Jessica was just 16 years old. And Joyce, his new wife, welcomed her and took her, care of her like a mother would do. Joyce played a significant role in Francis and Jessica's life. Francis settled in East London with his family. He was really a loving human being and very welcoming. Once Francis has met you, he deemed you as a friend. In fact, his name, Fadi Frank, was coined out of his affection for people. Fadi, meaning friend, an abbreviation of Francis as Frank. So his affection called Paddy Frank by most people. Had a very big appetite for life and also food. <laughs> it was also the life of every party yeah. that he attended. France was, a, was an avid Liverpool FC supporter. I don't know why. <laughs> he loved the club unconditionally and would argue endlessly with anyone who was prepared to listen to him on football matters. France's career in London centered mostly around British Rail, where he spent close to eight years. Unfortunately, Francis suffered a brain aneurysm whilst on duty at Duncan Stadium in 2016. He was rushed to the Royal Hampshire Hospital in Sheffield, where he, uh, where he had a successful operation by one Dr. Bacon, who Francis always praised as a doctor who was determined to keep him alive. At the time of the incident, Francis had settled with his current partner, Nadia Santuari. Francis was fortunate in the sense that his partner, Nadia was a nurse, so she took responsibility of looking after Francis after his operation and did very well with aftercare. Francis actually gradually 
come back to life, come back to his feet. I was able to move around and eat it. And he even started driving. He came to Ghana during the funeral of Nana's father in 2020. 2020. And unfortunately, whilst Francis was there, uh, this is his, his mom passed. Francis took solace in the fact that he was able to see his mom and tell her before she passed. Francis was praying to visit Ghana for the one year anniversary of Nana's father in December 2021. Unfortunately, he fell and well on Thursday, the 9th of December 2021. I was rushed to St. George's Hospital at Tooting Broadway. He seemed to be recovering. I was even prepared to go home on Saturday, the 11th of December, when he suffered a cardiac arrest and passed on that morning. Francis left behind six children, namely Jessica, Desiree, Anaya, Zuriela, Zakaria, and Zubidia and two grandchildren, Janelle and Jesse. But it was simply regrettable for forever in our hearts. May your gentle soul rest in better peace. Amen. Amen. I am, because of the time that we have, I'm going to ask um, for the tributes from the siblings. And then after that, we'll take the tribute also from the children. And then the final tribute to be the one from his partner. And then we'll have a short exhortation because we only have one hour here. And then we'll make our way to the gravesite. So can I kindly ask? Thank you. Good morning, all. Good morning. If somebody had told me um, that I'll be standing here, to give tribute to my brother, I would have said it's a lie. Because even when it was difficult, it was challenging, he still believed that he survived. We thank you all for showing up and supporting us. Remember him before the silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken. Before the pitcher is shattered at the spring and the wheel broken at the well. And the dust returns to the ground it came from, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Ecclesiastes 12, 6 to 7. There are many notes of not about them. The many noticeable things about Francis included his tall stature, infectious smile, and hearts that makes one feel like the most important person in the world. He always made himself available to family and friends. He was laid back. He was not boastful. He was a gentle giant, except when discussing his politics, especially the opposing party. He would argue passionately about Liverpool and Chelsea football clubs. Like my older brother said, we never understood why. Kojo did not see greatness, only goodness in people. We have memories of him being very protective. He had lots of sisters. He would never bring any of his girlfriends to the house. And if he brought you to the house, you better not speak to any of us because he would curse you so bad. And you would never come back to the house again. That was him. But the uh, siblings' fights were natural and familiar to us. But we believe that built a bond and an unexplainable understanding. A belief that no matter the difficult circumstances he found himself, which was unfortunately quite frequent, we, he knew that we always had his back. We we'll miss Kojo. Moments like his signature belching, you come stand right in front of, right behind your, your, your ear, and but as if he's talking to you, and you just belch so hard into your ears. And then when you turn around and you yell at him, we just look at you and give you the most sinister smile, and it was still beautiful, because that was just him. Sometimes after you finish feeding him, we just rub his hand over his belly, and we just stretch out on the sofa. That was him. Always had a smile on his face. And no matter how difficult or challenging the times were, doesn't matter what he was feeling, even if he disagreed with you. 
But you wouldn't say, oh, he always kept things for himself. He kept it within him. Sometimes he needed to push it, which was, I, I was the button. I would push and push. Because he knew that no matter what I was supporting, I would have his back. During a point in this time, it felt like the whole world was against him. Nobody understood what he was not going through. To err is human. To forgive is divine. He still went through it. So I keep asking myself, why this time? What went wrong? Even when we thought we were losing five, six years ago, he made it. So why? Why would my pastor said we shouldn't ask God why? But sometimes you human, you ask, why would you take him away? We lost our father, we lost our mother. Why our brother? He was the one that was holding all of us together. When tomorrow starts, could you? And you are not here. Oh, you are in our heart. We know death is not the end. You have not slept so long ago. but now you will be watching me from heaven. The shock of losing you so suddenly still breaks my heart, even after a few months of you passing. I miss you dearly and think of you each and every day, but the memory we share will constantly be in my heart. That you were the best father I could ever ask for. You loved and cared for all your children unconditionally. A letter from Sapoma. That I can't believe you're gone. I never imagined this happening so soon. It does not feel real. As your firstborn, you were so proud of me and took me everywhere with you. Every time you traveled abroad, you would return with a big suitcase full of gifts just for me. Back when working, working at radio, when it's so, real, feeling it's hard to sit. Every move I make, every move I from the memories we shared in Ghana, you would come and visit or pick me up from Holy Child to the memories of when we moved to the UK. You were always beside me. When I initially told you I was pregnant with Janelle, 
you were, so, you were disappointed because I was young and still in university. After a few months, you became my biggest support system. On days that Janelle's dad was at work, he would even come to my hospital appointments with me and pretend to be the father. The nurses always believed you as you were so young and charming. Daddy was so obsessed with his first grandchild, Janelle. He would randomly call from work to ask if she was asleep and why he couldn't hear her in the background. He would always be with us to try and keep her awake so that he could see her when he got home. My sister Desiree and I share so many, so many fond memories and funny, so many fond and funny memories of Paddy in our younger days, and I'd like to share a few. Almost every night, he would have us polish his shoes for work. He made sure we polished them until we could see our reflections in them. In the evening, when he wanted something light, he would request that we bring him a bowl of milk with a selection of several different cereals that he would mix together. Paddy was infamous for discovering the best new cereals. One thing about Paddy, when he came to our weekly allowance, was that he made sure we worked for the money. We had, to, we had to spend the money wisely unless we wanted to polish his work shoes again or do another tedious job. We have vivid memories of how he would always come back from work with his backpack full of treats. He would laugh and ask how, how we would laugh and ask how he managed to fit all of it in his backpack and he would tell us this was the last time he would bring anything from work. Lo and behold, Paddy will still come back from work the next day with his bag full of goodies after he saw he was done. Paddy's light shone beyond our household. He was the glue to our family here in the UK. He kept us all in, the reg in regular contact with each other, from regular weekend visits to his siblings' homes, to picking up our cousins for sleepovers. Those sleepovers would often include late night test for shopping trips, where he would allow us to go through the aisle and pick whatever we wanted. You were the first cool dad slash uncle. Due to how relatable and your mind, mind, how your mindset was. You loved your family dearly and always wanted to bring her to us. or shout Sapuma when I call. I can truly say you were an amazing and selfless soul. You never said no when I needed you and was the brightest light that shone in your room. Daddy, I will miss you, but from the conversation we had in my dream after you passed, you told me, cry no more, but I am with you as a guardian angel. As hard as it is to accept you as a guardian angel, I know you're in a better place. You are caring, warm and welcoming to everyone, whether family or not. It was not supposed to end like this. Though I know no one lives forever, I still wish you could have stayed for a while longer. We will meet again in the heavens above as we are reunited with the ones we love. God gain an angel. Rest in perfect peace. A Japan. Daye, we shall meet again one day. But for now, it's good bye. We are going to take the last few from the partner from. Let's go from. And I ask you to the final figure. You don't have to touch it. The very first day we decided to go out, we kept playing Man in a Million by Neo and said it was dedicated to me. You also said we would spend the rest of our lives together. I doubted it, but against all odds, you stood by your word, and indeed, it's 
spend the rest of your life with me. Hmm, Kojo, the love of my life. Life, though our time together has been casual, my darling, I have truly had the time of my life with you. Anytime I get into our car to drive, I remember how you'd come out and say, small girl, get into the front seat and let the expert do the job. You were my best friend and lover. I mean my ride or die buddy. You never said no to me when I asked you to do to take me somewhere. Hmm. I choose not to say so much, but I believe with your sudden departure, all of us here today will learn to love and cherish each other with every given day and not procrastinate as it might be late to show how much we love or care about a person. Finally, Pujo, I'll keep your last words when you got into the ambulance in my heart forever. You said, baby, in case anything happens to me, remember I love you and appreciate all you've done for me. Something you have never said before when you're going to hospital, but then you did it that day. I want you to know I do likewise, my love. Today I stand here though to say goodbye. I also wish I could feel your warmth and hear you call me Chi baby one more time. <laughs> to meet again, baby, I'll always love you. And come to think of it, you truly are one in a million, my AC baby. Love you forever. I love you so much, Kujo. You never stopped loving me until death. I know, I know that you still loved me. I want you to know that I'll always, I've said it, but I say it again, I'll always love you. Thank you for standing by me. Thank you very much. Thank you for all those wonderful tributes. I knew him as his pastor, and I can confidently say that he was a thoroughly good man. For all the time that I knew him, he was always ever respectful to me. And I always made sure that I had a word of encouragement for him because there were moments that he needed somebody to give me a word of encouragement. Death is a divinely appointed moment for every one of us that is here. It is something that all of us will experience at one time or the other. But the hope for the Christian or for those that are giving their lives to Christ, it is that of the resurrection. And today, though our hearts may be broken, we have this confident assurance according to God's word, which cannot be a lie. The Bible says that it is impossible for God to lie. So the word of God for us is sure and it is true. And God's word tells us that because of the resurrection, we have hope. Paul the Apostle would write to the Corinthians, and he would question those who had their doubts about the resurrection and he said if there is no resurrection and Christ did not rise from the dead then it means that our faith is vain our faith is useless our faith has no reason or meaning behind it and he says if we say that there is no resurrection then it also means that those of us who have believed in the resurrection our faith also is futile because we are saying that Jesus was raised from the dead if indeed he was never raised from the dead and that means that there is no power in that testimony and we are found even to be deceitful people who are saying things that are not true if Christ did not rise from the dead. But then if Christ rose from the dead, then it is a demonstration to us that because he rose from the dead, we also will rise up from the dead and death will not be the end of humanity. I want to read what the Bible tells us again in the book of First Corinthians because Paul makes a very powerful statement and he says to us that there's a mystery now what is a mystery a mystery is something that has been hidden through the years over the years that have been hidden but has now been revealed that is the decree truth of God's Word that is revealed to us even here and now and Paul said I'm going to reveal to you a mystery and what is that mystery he said it's the mystery of the resurrection 
that the day is coming when everyone that has fallen asleep, and again, Paul would use the word asleep, falling asleep, even as we are seeing our brother, for those of you who were there yesterday, he's just like somebody who is sleeping. And Paul says, those of our beloved who fall asleep, there is a hope for them that it will not always be the case. But a day is coming, according to the revelation of this mystery, when those that are dead in Christ shall come back to life. Because the truth is that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God cannot be inherited in this nature of ours. If we are going to inherit the kingdom of God, we need to transit to another nature. And the nature only comes through the process of death. So death itself is a process of life. It's a process of life because Jesus said to Martha that I am the resurrection and the life. He didn't say I am the life and the resurrection. In that case, it would be this life and the resurrection afterwards. But he says I am the resurrection and the life, which means after the resurrection, there comes a life. But that life is a life that we cannot enter into in this carnal body, in this flesh and blood. We have to go through the process of death. And the Bible says that the day shall come when the trumpet shall sound. And the dead in Christ will be raised up at the voice of the archangel, at the shout of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us that the dead in Christ will rise up first. This corruptible will put on the corruptible. This mortal will take on immortality. This one that perishes, which is subject to death, this flesh of ours, will take on a new form, and that form will be imperishable. It's a wondrous thing. It's a miracle. Our bodies will be changed. And in that change, we will receive immortality. Now we are all mortal. All of us are mortal. But the day comes when we shall put on immortality. And when we put on that mortality, then the Bible says, now will come the fulfillment of this scripture. That death is swallowed up in victory. Because death will be finally swallowed up and there will be no more death. Because our bodies now will be resistant and our bodies now will be immortal. And so Paul says to us that let us cherish this. When we read yesterday from 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4 from verse number 13, it says, therefore, comfort one another with these words. And so this morning, my duty is to comfort everyone who is going through mourning, that the confidence expectation that we have, the confident expectation that we have of our brother is that when the trumpet shall sound on that day, he will rise because he gave his life to Jesus Christ. And finally, the Bible says, those of us who live, let us be steadfast in our service of God, in our work in the church. If you are not a Christian, I urge you to make it your, your, your aim that you will look um, to the scriptures and you would allow the Spirit of God to give you this inner conviction because what we are seeing here is real and this is the end of all men. And my prayer is that all of us, all of us will give our lives to Jesus Christ. So that when that day comes for all of us, we will go with the assurance that when the resurrection sound is heard, when the trumpet is heard, all of us will rise up into eternal life. So let's be steadfast. He says, be immovable, abound in the work of the Lord. Serve God. Use your life and, and, and make an impact in your generation. We came for a reason. There is a purpose for all of us here. Let's live lives of purpose to the glory of God. And after we are done, we'll be like Paul who said that I fought the good fight. I've run the race and now my life is over. And I'm now waiting for the crown that he has laid in the heavens for me. Not only for me, but for all those who have loved his appearing. So Francis, on that day, may you receive your crown. May Almighty God keep you in perfect peace. May your soul rest in the hands of Almighty God until that day when we shall meet again. Francis, we pray for you that may Almighty God keep you and may Almighty God watch over you. May he keep his angels charge over you until that day when all of us shall meet together to the glory of Almighty God. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we give you praise for everyone that is gathered here. For all the loved ones who have journeyed all the way from Ghana and other places to be here. We thank you, my God, for this hour. And now as we go to placing my God in the place of rest, we ask the God that your presence will go with us, will take us, and that you will be with us even as we go through that process. Above all, we commit his soul, his spirit, and his body into your care. That Lord, watch over him and keep watch over him until that day when the dead in Christ and the living shall rise together. We thank you, we bless you, we give you praise. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we pray. And all the people said, Amen. We're going to take our last hymn and um, we will make our way to the graveside. The last hymn, I believe, is. When peace like a river, thank you so much, Abel. When peace like a river, and death my Oh, 
face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and grant you peace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. So we make our way to the grace. I thank you all for coming this morning. God bless you.
be dangerous. We are breaking up, so hurry up and come to this side, okay? Let's go to the middle. Let's go down there, one. Yes, you can. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Maybe I'll join it. Lord, with me abide When other help Pairs fill and comfort flee Help all the helpless So abide with me Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life he that believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And he that lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus said to Martha, do you believe this? It's a question that I ask everyone, do you believe this? Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he shall stand at last upon the earth. And, though, and after my skin is destroyed, this I know that in my flesh I will see God whom I shall see for myself, and I will behold him with my own eyes. He says, how my heart yearns within me. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Bible says that Lord you have been our dwelling place from all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever the earth and the world were made from everlasting to everlasting you are God simply means that our home through all generations has been with God we are visitors on earth and our home has always been with God and today our brother is going to our eternal home it is the home for all humanity. And we commit him into the hands of Almighty God. That may Almighty God take care of his soul and his spirit and give him his body. And so for as much as we can please Almighty God of his great mercy to take out to himself the soul of our dear brother yet departed. We therefore commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, can I have some of the family members come along as we do this? Say it's earth to earth. You have it there. You have it there. Sorry. Earth to earth. Sorry. Dust to dust. Ashes to ashes. Go ahead. in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our power body that it may be like unto his own glorious body according to the working of his mighty power by which is able to serve all things unto himself.
Father, we thank you for the life of our brother Francis Kojukwate Akomo. Today we commit him to the ground. The Bible says that man is dust, and to dust he shall return. Today we return him to his dust. We ask of God that may your hand rest upon him until that day when the trumpet sound shall be heard, and when the dead in Christ shall arise. Until that day, we ask the Lord that you watch over him. We commit him to your care, Lord, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We ask of God that he shall be well with the family. Leave the entire family into your hands. We leave the children into your care. We ask of God that you make provision for the partner and for all the loved ones and all those that have stood for him all his years. Lord, now we return him to you and we ask of God that let your name be glorified. We thank you, we bless you, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. May his soul rest in perfect peace unto that day when we shall meet again. Let us share the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you all for your time. God bless you and have a safe day. says that I should tell you, may the Lord be with you and keep you safe. Amen. Please, there is, there is a collection we take for the graves and um, the, the people that work here. So, um, I don't know the collection Francis, for the call, a pound, this is whatever, please, you can donate yes. that and we'll give them to them so that they take care of it. I'll give you these flowers. It's not just a flowers. It's all things from my heart. It's represent the flowers. May the Lord keep you and keep you safe. Amen.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 in the next hour or two so uh, stay tuned there's a link of that as well when you go to those who don't have the link yes we will continue we continue with this on June 4 TV 2 June 4 TV 2 the same channel that you view with this on June 4 TV 2 that's where we will continue the same channel as this one continue with the reception there so god bless you all for the support and your love uh, and may our brother so rest in peace the beautiful cemetery that has been laid to rest
Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. 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 Y